So let's get to building. Just so you can see all the parts and how they go together. You're going to put the bushing into the coupling. The nipple goes into the bushing. There's going to be some 2 inch pipe in the back along with your diaphragm and stuff like that. There's going to be a bolt here, 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 and there to hold in the tensioning ring. And then this pipe is going to go in and make contact with the diaphragm and the horn will be here. So that's basically how it goes together. So just so you know why this connection here is threaded, in my first design, or I should say not my design, but the first horns I made, the um, diaphragm tension was adjusted by hitting the bell tube with a hammer to adjust how far in, it, in or out it was. But in my design, the bell tube is going to be permanently connected to this nipple and you can fine tune the tension by adjusting the position of the nipple and that'll put just the right amount of tension on the diaphragm without having to use a hammer. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually attach the bell tube to this nipple using some epoxy and tape. So in order to get this nipple to stay on the pipe in the perfect spot, we're going to wrap the pipe with a little bit of tape so that this nipple is a snug fit over it, and then we're going to dump some epoxy around the inside to kind of seal that from the air pressure. So let's do that. So here I have some duct tape, and I know exactly where the middle of the nipple should be. So I'm going to start my wrap right there. Alright, let's check the fit on that. We want the fit to be really snug so that no epoxy can drip down to the other side of the tape. That's really nice. And as you can see, I hope, the nipple is very centered on that piece of pipe so that the pipe will contact the diaphragm in the perfect spot. So here I'm just wrapping up my second bell tube because I'm making two horns. Just remember to keep the wrapping really tight so it stays perfectly parallel to the tube because that'll keep the diaphragm contacting the dead center of the bell tube which is very important for the sealing and the proper function of your horn. So just make sure your tape is wound real tight around that tube and then take your nipple and test the fit. Perfect. Nice and tight so when you put the epoxy in there it won't drip down. So even though this distance is technically fine tunable by this nipple, you still want it to be the proper length right here because there's a certain point at which the threads become harder and harder to, to tighten. So even though you can adjust it a little bit, there is some room for error but you want this to be the right length. So for my fittings, this happens to be one and a half inches but for your fittings they might be different. If you get fittings that look like mine, chances are this length should be one and a half inches. So make sure you got that the right length. So to trim this one on the right down to the length that I have on the left, I'm just gonna use my bench grinder. Remember to turn the pipes evenly so it stays flat. So here's just a little test fit. Got the bushing seated all the way on the bottom. If we put a straight edge down there, you can see that there's about a quarter inch from the right side of the straight edge down to the lip on the inside of the coupling, which is just shy of the width that our ring on the inside will be for the diaphragm to rest up against. And it's just shy because the part of this coupling is gonna 
bring this out a little bit more so it's going to be perfect. So now that we have this at the correct length, let's go ahead and measure it. Just over an inch and a half, so we'll call it an inch and a half. So that's the length you need this piece of the pipe to extend from the nipple into the horn. One and a half inches. I'm going to go ahead and make sure both of mine are the right length. You can see this one's a little bit short. So I'll go ahead and fix that and then we'll go epoxy those. Alright, so there I have my two bell tubes ready for some epoxy around that nipple. So let's do that right now. Okay, so I have these both very lightly clamped in the vise. Make sure they're both sticking straight up so the epoxy can fill all sides equally. So let's go ahead and mix up our epoxy. When you mix your epoxy, make sure you have equal parts. And when I say equal parts, I mean dead equal. Because any difference will cause your epoxy to not harden completely. So make sure you do equal parts. Make sure to mix the epoxy thoroughly until it becomes a uniform color. Remember these horns are going to be under pressure so you want your joints to be really strong. And if your horn leaks it won't be as loud as it could be. So take your time when you're preparing and mixing your epoxy. Okay. So now I'm just going to apply it very carefully to the outside of the pipe and it will fall down to the inside of the nipple. So just take a little bit on your mixer and put it on the side like this and just let it fall down into the nipple. This is going to be really tedious but it's the only way to do it. If you get any epoxy on the threads, just wipe it off. This stuff doesn't harden fast, so you have time. Just keep putting it in there until it won't go in anymore. And make sure you put it all around the nipple. Like I said, this is going to be a very tedious process, but don't rush it because this is going to be a joint that holds pressure. Alright, so as you can see, the one on the right is not sinking down anymore, so that means that one is full. The one on the left just needs a little bit more. And that's good if it beads up a little bit. You want a nice smooth transition from the pipe to the nipple. So you kind of want an angle like that. You can kind of see on the right how it has this little bead right there. That's perfect. Alright, that looks perfect. So that's that step. Now we just need to let these sit for a while, let them cure. Usually that takes 12 to 24 hours, so during that time don't touch it at all or else you can ruin the joint. Also just make sure that there's no epoxy on the threads because once that cures on these threads there's pretty much no getting it off. I don't see any on here so I think I'm good. And we can go on to the next step.